Welcome back to Lucky Time Explosion. Today's guest is Lunox. It's Lucky Time Explosion. A podcast to rock your sock, eat some broccoli, and wash your feet. It's time for LT. I had a dream last night. I was co-host of a very strange podcast. The name wasn't Schmoogie Boogie, wasn't Flabby Dabby, but it was Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. And then I woke up and then I was here. It wasn't a dream, Morgan. It wasn't a dream. No, we're actually here on Lucky Time Explosion. Yes. I think it's episode 40. What's up? Welcome, everybody. Do some like confetti special pew, effects. Pew, pew. Anyway, today we're joined by Lou Knox. What's it's going me. on, Lou? How you doing? Hello, hello. Yeah, so Lou, I met you a while back when uh, Con Artist was at 329 Broom Street briefly. You were hanging out with some like graph writers and stuff. That's right. Yeah. What have you been up to lately? Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your practice. Well, to put you home myself. No, just <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi. I, I basically like, I consider myself more of a sticker guy these days, I think. Mm. You know, I got a lot of stickers out there. You could see them around New York and... Almost all over New York, all five boroughs. I have gone all city with my stickers. I feel like wherever I go, I see your sticker. And Thank it's, you. it blows my mind. <laughs> I, a lot of people say that to me, and that, so I know people aren't just you know, pulling my chains. So no, you're getting happy. it done, man. You get out there. Uh, that's what I said the other day. I was upset that I wasn't seeing my sticker in certain places, and I was like, well, I just got to go harder then, you know? Jeez. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like writers, right? Where you're just, you're just out there to get the name up. And to, it's kind of like a up. puppy dog. I like want to stop at every tree and piss on it, basically. <laughs> 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 um, it's like a, I, stickers are funny because like, I think of it like a game of tag that yeah. goes around, around the world and whatnot. Because like when you go to like, that's the real fun of stickering. When you go to like a foreign country and you see like the little sticker like spot and you're like, Ooh, uh, there it is. Hi everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is exciting. Yeah. I love slapping. Yeah, yeah. We, we met at Con Artist and Con Artist had a, um, one of the, one of the biggest shows of sticker art ever. We had a uh, two shows called slap and slap Two, Uh, and we ended up with one of the largest collections of, of graffiti and art stickers in the world and we actually shipped that around a couple places like sri lanka and i think like paris or something amazing some, some other thing and it was a really good book you know uh, they they did a lot of um, amazing work for that it's yeah. an art form on its own it's similar to like uh to similar to graffiti or street art i feel like a good sticker you steal someone else's logo and you change the colors a little bit and that's this recipe for a good sticker like the kick gas best buy sticker yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just keep the colors and change the font a tiny bit and make it your own you know can't miss yeah. that either yeah uh, yeah you also like do some filmmaking uh, I, uh, I yeah, I'm a recovered film. <laughs> You're a recovering <laughs> filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like definitely like I spent like the first like 15 years of my life like yeah. uh, like after I kind of got into high school and then moved on like I was just making films and then I did music videos and I did graffiti films, but like at some point I got really frustrated with the industry. I was like mm. already doing commercial level stuff. Yeah. And then I just like walked into a deal for a tech company and I was like, okay, that's cool. That was ran random shit happens, but tech, the last industry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all we've got left. <laughs> the final frontier. Nothing's real. It's all ones and zeros. Wake yeah, me up from this night. No, I like it. And even the industry <laughs> itself, it's all just like, you know, smoke and mirrors. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Speaking of smoke and mirrors, you recently got back from Burning Man. Or not recently, but last year you went to Burning Man. I was at Burning Man last year. That was year. the mud out year. That was mud out year. Was that your first time going? It was, but oh. I was up there for like almost five months. Oh, so you were going with the project. Well, no, I, I actually worked for this organization called NVO, which is a okay. Nevada operations for Burning Man. Oh. So I was maintaining one of their properties. Oh, damn. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you were one of the, like, the official people rolling around at the festival? I had a truck at the festival if I wanted to. Nice. I was that asshole. My truck didn't have any lights on it. It just had the headlights, and people would say, that's a shitty art car. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an art <laughs> car, damn it. It's not an art car. They yell at me. It was I, pretty funny. I used to go to Burning Man for like five years in a row from like 2005 to 2010. Yeah. Uh, pretty much and yeah the dmv is the department of mutant vehicles that's there right. you have to register if you're if your galt cart is not goofy enough then they like no you have to make it weirder uh but it's pretty cool you see a lot of people rolling around like on uh 
just like sofas with wheels yeah and like motors in them a lot of like really fun uh kind of vehicles bikes and things yeah. did you like it even though it got rained out a little uh yeah i mean because i i didn't have to go anywhere because like i was working there so yeah it's like if i mean i i had an rv and i didn't have to go anywhere and but so my hardest like what like effort was to get to the food <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah, because you have to bring all your food usually at Burning Man. Not um, if you work there. Yeah. So it was a different experience <laughs> for you. A yeah. much better experience than mostly everyone else's. Maybe. Do you feel like you got, but you weren't really attending it as like a party or you weren't going to like. Oh, right. I, I only had so. to work one day during the burn. Um, oh, the did. rest of the time I was just living my life, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had, I had a blast because like. The interesting thing is like there's a whole like sort of other thing that goes on where they like um, all the people that are at all the people that are working there like DPW and NVO yeah. like the two organizations that run it. Um, they all have this thing where they build their own um, basically effigies oh. uh, that represent the the whatever your 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 part of the organization your company your your team within the organization, and then we burn all that stuff. Oh wow, they're really getting in the spirit then. Yeah, and then Ooh. there's another really cool activity where we basically uh, we build a shade structure, and it's at the 420 spire. Nice, because like 420, it's uh yeah, the streets are laid out like a clock kind exactly. of exactly. Yeah, I wonder if Christopher Lee ever went to any of the Burning Men, you yeah. know, because he was in Wicker Man, <laughs> so he can stand in front of it and be like ah, scream. It's too traumatic Covered for him. Covered in bees. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the bees. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the Nicolas Cage version. Oh, I heard Nicolas Cage is going to play Spider Man in an upcoming no. Spider Man noir for real for Netflix. Yeah, excited. I know that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But I lo I love Burning Man. I thought Burning Man was cool. It, it got a lot of like you know it still gets a lot of hate for random things. And when I first went, my friend Max was like begging me to go. He was like, "You have to come to Burning Man. You're going to love it." And I was like, "I don't want to go to your hippie party in the desert. I don't care." And then I went there and like it totally blew my mind and I had such a fun time. And it was a lot amazing. of people that look like Tank Girl. Yeah. And then like right. I, I had this awesome. experience, which I hear is kind of common. <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. I had this like right. common experience of like for the first th two or three days, just kind of being like culture shocked and like not feeling like I fit in yet and being weird. Yeah. Uh, and then having some sort of like epiphany or experience around day three or four that makes you like get it. And then by day six, I didn't want to go home. And then when I came back, I was like, I feel oppressed by all these traffic lights and parking meters. <laughs> so <laughs> question. Like, we could live like this all the time. Uh, I have a question. So really like not. a big part of this is yeah. steampunk. Mm. Sort could of. Could you explain to me why, what, what's the deal? Like where did steampunk start and why is it such a big part of uh well, actually, Burning there's Man. another festival called like Wasteland, I think, that is sure. uh, is basically Burning Man, but for the like um, Mad Max steampunkers oh, that's specifically. Awesome. So it's even like crazier kind of cooler i guess but i think that the burning man thing for steampunk just came out of um necessity because you need goggles for like the dust storms right and it just kind of looked kind of mad max so people started yeah. leaning into it because you also have people there who are like dressed up like fairies and you mm -hmm. know cutesy shit and big stilts and stuff it's a very expressive place um the thing i love about it actually is that the burning man organization the black rock organization gives like more money directly to artists than like the national endowment of the arts like, and I think like a few of the top three, like combined, because mm -hmm. they'll give you like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars to like pull off a project. If you can give them a good, you know, proposal and show them you have a team and you know what you're doing. Yeah. There's some solid projects out there. Yeah. And everyone, really cool stuff. Everyone always decries it like, oh, it was better back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things where like it was better back when it was free. It was better back when there was less people. Right. But what I see is just like the artwork keeps getting pushed. The bigger the budget gets. So like the crazier things that you run into out there. Like I've seen yeah. like life-size mousetrap, the board game. Right. A four-story tall like Tetris. Yeah. I, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. I mean, when people say it's better back in the day, what does that really mean? Because like when you were younger, it was better, but now you're older. So maybe you should make it better or something like that. You know <laughs> yeah. That attitude. Like, yeah. 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 This, I think it's a general thing in life. It's also kind of like New York. It, it, to me, it has a very similar parallel to New York. I was like, I yeah. miss New York back in the day. Yeah. I want it to be back in the day. I'm like, it's always changing. It's always turning itself over and becoming something different. It's like, like Inception. Yeah. You know, the city just folding on top of itself. Yeah. Although maybe you need a little bit more acid to really get that Inception vibe. Yeah. Which, do you know anybody? <laughs> yeah, that's a good place. Gotcha, talk to me after the show. Okay, yeah. I'm down. <laughs> Let's do it, man. The weather's going to get nice eventually, so they say. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. Well, if you want to talk about psychedelics, I have one funny story I could tell. 
Oh, hit sure. me. Which is I was. I on got a, one for you after. So all right. So I was with um, somebody on this rooftop bar, and we decided to take some mushrooms. And it was their first time doing mushrooms, and I not mine, but I should have uh, made a better decision. So we're on top of the bar, starting to come up, starting to feel good. We're like, maybe we shouldn't change locales. And I was like, I want like candy, I had like a sweet tooth, right? <laughs> and I thought, what would be the best place to go when you're like tripping? It'd be like a candy shop, where it's oh, all this candy fuck. everywhere, and you can just like buy candy everywhere. But we were in Midtown. And the closest candy shop is a place called Dylan's Candy oh, Bar. Oh, I know that place. Uh, who is the who's the daughter of? It's like Dylan's like the daughter of somebody famous, a fashion designer or something. I the, don't remember which one. The reason that I know that place is I went to yeah. a, a Strangers with Candy after party when that movie came out. And that was yeah. the after party location. So yeah. that's how I know it. But the Midtown Candy Shop was not the candy shops of my memory uh, in the mall, in a slow mall in San Diego. And mm. it was a nightmare. Yeah. And as soon as I was in there for 30 seconds, there was like kids screaming. All the staff looked miserable. All the parents in line looked miserable. It was like sensory overload. And like we walked in there 30 seconds later, we're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. And then we just went to the park and there were fireflies and it was nice. Nice. That is so nice. don't go to a candy shop. Nice. The first time I took acid was at Woodstock 99. Mm, okay. And I bought it from this dude that looked exactly like Jerry Garcia, had a tie dye shirt and a staff. <laughs> he gave us triple dipped South Park characters. Wow. And uh, I had two Eric Cartmans. And I, you know, again, I've never done it before. So, you know, I drop a tab and it's taken a while, which is interesting because I have a very fast metabolism. Not anymore. Mm. Um, zoom in on my stomach. Uh, anyway, so, you know, I'm waiting and waiting. And then all of a sudden the clouds started moving like 100 miles per hour. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, Holy shit. Mm. And, it, you know, it was early morning in the beginning of Woodstock. And I see this painting of Jimi Hendrix. And I hear in my mind, he's like, it's going to be a good trip. And I'm like, oh, shit, Jimmy gave me the blessing. <laughs> so from there, it was amazing. You know, there was this big open field. I see people like moving like rubber people. It took me 30 minutes to sign my name at the legalized marijuana booth. And the people were cheering me on at the end. It was just a bunch of hieroglyphics. <laughs> it, so it wasn't long. even my name. And then I rolled over the hill, and there's James Brown. Amazing. Screaming over and over again, what's my name? And they're like, James Brown. And just went on for like 10 minutes. And finally, I was like, what's my name? And they're like, James fucking Brown. And then. Uh, what was happening? James Brown's obviously. Seemed like he forgot his name. They need to repeat it over and over again. <laughs> he wasn't for a good there, 10 minutes. really. No, he was there. Oh, he was actually a James oh, Brown yeah, concert. No, no, no. I saw James Brown. He was there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, he was there. That's yeah, funny. that makes sense. What's and then, and then after that was Jamiroquai. Nice. And forget about it, man. That so that fun. was my first acid trip. Blast off. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. But Bur Burning Man's like not. I mean, it's known as being like a, <clears throat> excuse me, known as being like kind of a drug haven. But it's gotten more like family friendly over the years. Like you see more people bringing sure. their kids. You bring your kids, yeah, so the kids can do drugs too. They just like <laughs> drop MDMA. Yeah. Like, I love you, mommy. No, mommy. I just think as as the burners are kind of getting older, they like still want to have that creativity and they want to have that expression and that fun vacation. And yeah, they're, they're done with uh, like losing their gourd on a psilocybin or whatever. Are you guys yeah. aware of shirt cocking? No, Shirt tell me cocking? what that is. This is something that's very uniquely Burning Man, I find. Yeah. So there's a lot of nudists in, at the Burning Man <gasps> playa. I but do know what this some, is. Per, some people, like, uh, they just wear a shirt and then nothing else. <laughs> no pants. <laughs> no pants. <laughs> Big so, hat, sun zinc on the nose. You know what I'm saying? And, Riding uh, their bike. <laughs> So you're that. just like, what is going on here? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I think there's yeah. another word for that. It's called perverts and degenerates. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, not one to, I'm not one to yuck your yum. But, yeah. you know. Man, that's a great <laughs> saying. I'll, I'll do it. I'll I remember the yum. first time uh, someone s said yuck your yum, and I was like, I was amazed. I was like excited. One. I don't know I if I confused. love it. I was confused. I felt funny all over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use it that much, but I think it's a great fucking term. When you throw it it's in, I feel like that was the right use case, too. Oh. It was like, slid yeah. it right in there, you know? Yeah, you don't want to do it. Well, what are you up to now? <laughs> do you have any projects going? Uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, working on a book right now. Oh, Whoa. tell us about your book. It's a fun, it's a, well, I find writing a can. book is like a fun challenge. Mm, uh, yeah. Because like, I like to do longer projects. Like, I, I really enjoyed making a feature length film and mm. Um, I, I've been so busy doing other stuff that I haven't had a chance to really sit with myself and sort of like process the last few years of life. And so I've been kind of dealing with that. Um, is it and, autobiographical? Uh, yeah, fictional, but like autobiographical is kind of stuff. Kind of that time period, uh, like COVID to like the year after COVID kind of thing. And uh, I, I was uh, seeing a woman at that time and then 
she ended up uh, accidentally overdosing in my house. Ooh. And then, but like, there's a, there's a whole story behind it. And uh, sort of like our relationship, which was really kind of, kind of out there. But mm. uh, um, it's called Hotel Girl. And um, I kind of want to start like figuring out how I can start doing readings. Because I see a lot of people doing readings in New York. Yeah. I want to get in on this. And like, I feel like I need some feedback to sort of like, let me know help me go in the right direction. Well, when I, cool. when I ran into you to invite you come, to come on the show, we were at uh, Village Works. That's right. Go, go to Village Works, see if they'll uh, throw your book in there. Well, I, I'm not ready to throw the book out there. I think yeah. I, like, right now, like I wrote, I've written like the notes. So like this is my process right now for yeah. this. I've, I've been writing notes for years and I, I gathered all the notes towards the last winter. Mm. I spent a lot of time just gathering all these notes and like typing them into the computer. And now I've got all the notes in a document. And then so I've been taking those notes and then writing the first draft of the book. Right. Yeah. Outlining uh, still kind of. Well, I kind of did the outline. I kind of like have a lot. I, I've got about uh, 60,000 words done already. And wow. then so now. How many pages does that come out? To? I, I haven't even checked the page count yet. Honestly, it's just um, it's a big document, obviously. And um, as I'm putting it out now, I have got 10,000 words done of the first draft. Interesting. And, you know what I've been seeing a lot of lately with yeah. writers is um, kind of like writing a book in public kind of live by basically having a blog. Yeah. And then just like at writing to the book like as the blog and then later compiling that blog and putting it out and, as a book, mm -hmm. which is an interesting thing because you can kind of like build up a little audience too and build up some attention as it goes. Yeah. Uh, but then you're kind of like also kind of, you know, spoiling it. You know, what I mean? it's like, sure, it's kind of fun to get the whole thing in your hand and done first. So that's a that's a thing that I wrestle with, too. I've been thinking about books as well. Yeah. You know, uh, I led a pretty weird life, so I thought it might people might want to read about my Why funny not? stuff. Why not? The main thing I want to do, though, is because I'm one of those people that will and I, I've been like trying really hard on this podcast to not do it. Right. But I'm one of those people who has like the same stories. Like I have a okay. few really interesting stories. I thought you were going to say you're trying really hard not to shirt cock. I'm trying really. No, I am shirt cocking right now. I'm naked oh, yeah, from yeah, the waist below. That's the secret. We're all actually <laughs> shirt cocking yeah, at the all, table. We're all naked under here. <laughs> but but uh, I, I sell the same stories over and over again. You know, they'll be like, oh yeah, I heard that one. Oh, I heard that one. So I kind of want to put them all down in a book just so I can meet a new person and be like, here, read this and don't ever ask me anything about me. I dig it. Ever yeah. again. I think I it would it. also be funny, you know how, like you just said, like a lot of people forget and they tell the same story over and over again. Yeah. If you wrote a book and you kind just like just kept on like chapter six and now you're just basically saying what you did in chapter two like a bible verse it's like a refresher you're know, like chapter two paragraph four and the <laughs> you book know what is I mean. like 600 fucking pages it's just yeah. like you know tolstoy one piece. yeah exactly <laughs> oh, we're on the same page there i read books <laughs> well, do you read a lot are you a big reader uh I, when i was young i was a like voracious reader i mm. used to read so much as a kid like Johnny as we can Five. tell by the yeah. uh, by the vocabulary word sure voracious. i got 20 dollars words all over the place if hell yeah throw <laughs> but uh do you have a favorite author or uh, favorite authors i like there's a one book i really like uh house of leaves i don't know if you oh, yes. read that i was actually just watching something about yeah house of Le it wasn't actually about house of leaves but it had a big section about house of leaves because it was the history of liminal spaces. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Good one. So it's like a yeah. YouTube video. It's like a two, it was really good. I'll try mm, to link it in the description. It was like a two too. hour long thing. And it talked about um, how House of Leaves is kind of like a liminal space in book form. Sure. I wow. Could, I could dig that. Yeah. It's yeah. really, because it because as you read this book, it changes and like breaks down and like the columns start eroding and yeah. the text gets laid out in weird, strange places. So it kind of gives you this experience oh. of like what the person's going through in this crazy haunted that's house. That's awesome. I yeah. like that. Yeah, that's a good one. I it's, feel like a lot of people really, uh, if you find people that really like that book, they like really love that book. Yeah. And then there's so, if you go on the internet, there's so much, like so many like YouTube shows about this book. That was a hit. Yeah. Some was, people don't like it, but the same way like Infinite Jest or something. You know, like people either right. love it or hate Brandon, it. Brandon, what about you? Who's, who's one of your favorite I'm authors? I'm going to kind of like tell the truth. I'm going to be honest. I'm a fucking terrible reader. I've probably read... Um, I could probably count on my hands and toes how many books I've read to completion. Like I can read very well. <laughs> I had like this yeah. college <laughs> reading aptitude when I was like in fifth grade or whatever. But like I, I just don't do it. The first book I ever read fully was um, like a trashy sci a fantasy novel by Piers Anthony called Veil of the Vole. Ooh. And I read that. And then I read like a sci-fi book called like Marrow by Robert Reed. That was about like a giant planet and stuff. But like yeah, I've read very few. I read a lot of like articles and I did read you, a lot of Did Wikipedia. you used to read um, Choose Your Own Adventure books? 
Actually, yes, I fuck with Choose Your Own Adventure. Books. Those are awesome. Yeah. yeah, you may have heard of the guy that I like. I some some people may know him. <clears throat> he goes by the name Doctor Seuss. <laughs> uh, my favorite author. Yeah. yeah. Particularly love the early political cartoon. Yeah, he's he's yeah. an anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that's that's exactly why I... I anti Sino. He's, he's up there. Up to. That's great. From like the the Japanese internment camps. He did some uh, questionable comics about that yes. early on. But, you know, yes. a beloved then child. There's another speak, author speak, I love. Speak. His name is Penthouse. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually <laughs> trying to write more. This, this book has a lot of... It's like a lot of sex scenes, a lot of graphic sex scenes. Oh, like, my. I'm trying to get it's in smut. that... Like, I feel like I could hit that penthouse letters kind of like level. <laughs> I mean, I've read enough of them myself. So. Well, you saw Yi is uh, moving forward with his porn empire. That is nice. so strange. To he me. teamed up with Stormy Daniels' husband. Yeah, that's This so is weird. all real. That is real, actually. You're usually lying on the show, so. Hey, man, I read TMZ. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going on about Kim Kardashian. Come oh on. my god! But you guys like uh, Shel Silverstein as well? I do, of course. Cla- yeah. Classic guy. I mean, that, that book. It was always so frightening. You know, the, the book is a beautiful thing, and then you flip it over and you see Shel Silverstein. You're like, oh my god! Here we go. You spread recoil. Like, like, guy's, spread out. This guy's a Riz God, yo. He is a Riz God. He did stuff for Playboy. He did a lot of uh, illustrations. Makes sense. That does yeah. make sense. Oh yeah. All checks out. Yeah. But that book, the uh, the Giving Tree. Yeah. I mean, he was given that that tree. I mean, I gotta say, that was a very fucking depressing book. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, the, it teaches you a lesson, and it's a powerful book, but, I mean, you can reread it now, and you, 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 it's hard not to tear up a little bit. I mean, it's pretty rough. Man, good, good art moves you. Yeah, you know, you know the, the relationship between a young boy and a tree. Yeah. Sounds off, but he makes it work. And can you, you tell see us, his face. Can you tell us, like, a, a little story from your upcoming... The work, the work you're working on. Is there anything the in work particular? Work, I didn't, I didn't, the book. Like, if if uh, if later on I come back, I'll bring you a segment of this okay. at some point. All right, I yeah. promise you that. No live reading I, off I, the top I, of the I dome. Don't, I don't bring anything with me. Can't yeah, crack right. that nut yet. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Don't crack, crack, crack nut. the nut. You already sold the title, which I, you know, I like it. I like it. It's a Lou's good title. nut is tight. It's tight. <laughs> he ain't giving tight. it up. it's true i mean it's true uh but yeah uh i will definitely uh, bring you some some more of that nice next time i see you and let me know if you put anything out on that we'll we'll link it up yeah yeah i don't think i'm gonna go the blog route though or anything like that. yeah i feel like i'm gonna keep it all but i just want to get in there and start reading it in front of some people that's that's it and i think village works to be the platform to read in front of people and i'm like there we go that would be cool well i'm not ready and (laughs) also hey you gotta know something exciting to me when i first met you 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 told me that you did some stuff with trauma True. Oh. which is pretty awesome what did you do with trauma? trauma fan so i i'm really a jack of all trades and that's why it's hard to sort of say what i do because i'm yeah. just like i'm like i'm gonna do that today so i got to do a little bit of trauma acting uh Ooh. and i was acting with lloyd kaufman that's uh, so cool epic. yeah fucking epic and I, I would say, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I kind of directed the action in that scene a little bit myself, you know, so. Ah, you were, <laughs> one of those talents that makes things better. Yeah, he took he took the advice and he was like, I like this idea. We went with it. And I was really happy about that. And uh, it was really cool to work with Lloyd because like I, someone I'd, I'd been watching trauma movies since I was a little kid. Hell yeah. You know? Which is crazy. I mean, I, I was born in 79 and my sure. dad showed me the first toxic. I mean, I remember when he brought home class in Newcomb High. Yeah. Which as a young kid to watch that shit. That's one of my favorites. I mean, it's such a disgusting movie, man. It's when true. he there's this one scene where they're ha- they're fighting in the alleyway. Okay. And he takes his hand and he sticks it down his throat and you see the imprint of his hand in his neck. Yeah. And that fucked me up so much. I was just like what the fuck? I yeah. mean, it was epic that my dad was like sharing that with me and i used to beg him i'm like just get me a fangoria magazine yeah he's like, like if i do it for you just don't tell your mother one day he came back from work don't tell your mother and he threw me the fangoria magazine and i remember i'll never forget that magazine had rawhead rex in it i don't know if you cast ever saw rawhead rex um not off crazy head, makeup but going yeah. back to trauma yeah it's amazing that you got to work with a yeah. horror legend that's been doing it since the 70s combining comedy and humor that's cool that he took your advice too. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know? you know, he was open to the idea. I had an idea. Which I one say was it? Was which advice. which it was one was like, it? I had an idea, and he took the idea, and we ran with it. That's awesome. Um, it was uh, Lloyd's latest movie, which was called uh, Shakespeare's Shitstorm. Ah. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. We'll link to Shakespeare's Shitstorm below. I met him once when I was 14. There it is. I was at Comic-Con with my friend Ryan. We had a website called fatfiles.com that was nice. kind of like trying to be a e-bombs world. Uh, but it was just a couple of fourteen year old nerds running it. And we never had press, forget E Bounds. Yeah, E Bounds. <laughs> we had a press pass, you know, because we had this stupid website and we went up to the trauma booth and Lloyd was like bringing us back there and he was like he was like, Oh yeah, he was taking us so seriously. It was it was like the highlight of our of our visit because he was like we got to do some cross promotion on fatfiles.com. Go to Troma. I'll make a <laughs> banner on your website with some big titties. And nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah, he was such a funny guy. But yeah, yeah Toxic Avengers is now going to be a, um, a Broadway musical, apparently. They've been like flirting with that for a while. They did an off Broadway show. I really want to go see I, it. I think they're doing a major motion picture of it. I, I know about one. that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, as far yeah. as I know, yeah. I, I mean, it was mind blowing when they appeared on Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. yeah. They had their own <laughs> Toxic Avenger. <laughs> like, it's such crazy the idea you know a nerd falling into a vat of acid and turning into this toxic mutant who's like the classic superhero the tale shit out of everyone with a mop the, it's girl. a classic superhero tale with a tutu and a messed up face yeah but i think like create like when lloyd's like open to that and does it like sometimes like film directors who can do that are the ones who make real magic because sure. i was just thinking about last night i was talking with my wife about um star trek and how like the vulcan neck pinch was you know leonard nimoy's idea Oh, and wow. he, he said that I don't think my character would like punch somebody in the face. Mm. I think it's too violent for this like, you know, cold calculated Vulcan character. Yeah. And so he said, how about if I just like pinch him and incapacitate him with like a special pinch? And they said, okay. And they ran with it. And then it became like one of the seminal things in Star Trek. Awesome. So, you know, being open to your collaborators is an important lesson, kiddies. Yeah. I always kind of fantasized about him giving me the Vulcan neck pinch. He's not alive. So it's kind of depressing. <laughs> Do you know any incantations? Can we bring him back to life so he can give me the Vulcan neck pinch? We have, a, me out? we have a necromancer on in a couple of weeks. So you got to oh, wait nice. till then. Mm, <laughs> or, or go to like excited. a Star Trek con and just kind of put it out there. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot need, of guys you know? that look exactly like Leonard Nimoy Spock. They'll, they'll do it for Running you. around, do it for prancing you. and dancing. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, I'll give you $10 to give me the Vulcan. <laughs> but one thing I want to say about Lloyd before we... Please, uh, yeah. Uh, is that like not only is the guy like awesome because like he's made so many great fi pictures but he's been like a promoter of like amazing talent for his entire life like so many people like had their movies distributed by trauma as well yeah which was huge yeah the uh, guys from uh, Stra uh south, south park. park yeah look at those guys cannibal, cannibal holocaust the, yeah cannibal the musical the musical. I yeah. Oh, sorry, not to mix it up with Cannibal, Cannibal Holocaust, Holocaust, which is a also classic. A right. Yeah. Uh, classic. Cannibal the Musical was their student film, right? And then they, they released it through drama, I guess. It's a full. I mean, you've, you've seen. I've seen it. Yeah. Full Happy Spadoinkle yeah. Day. The Snowman yeah. Song. Yeah. It's really good. I like that as well. Happy yeah. Spadoinkle Day. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, the, you know, Lloyd's always been doing cool, edgy, weird stuff, which is yeah, you know I think awesome. They put out like With Nail and I and all these like random. What was the too. first trauma film that you saw? <sighs> Let's see. Definitely, I don't know. I feel like it might have been Toxic Avenger, but um, it. There was a time, like basically my senior year of college, where like I had a friend who lived in town, and he had like that motif in his apartment of like all the TVs. You know, right. like he had been collecting all those big That's box cool. TVs, and he had like a whole wall of TVs That's in sick. his awesome. apartment. And so we would just watch, like we would get fucked up and just watch movies yeah. all day long um, on all these TVs. And so that's like really like where I watched uh, all those like Cannibal the Musical and all that other stuff. But I, I think that might, like I knew of trauma, but like I think that might've been my first real like getting down to it. And, I can't imagine how many movies he must have pushed out. I mean, hundreds, yeah. hundreds. hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. Easy hundreds. Uh, Tromeo and Juliet, man, sure. the, the popcorn scene. Yeah. Rips open her stomach and just popcorn starts shooting out. <laughs> awesome. Talk about right. fantasies. Well, Lou, we only have a couple minutes left. I want to thank you for coming on and hanging out with us. Is there anything, I mean, you're a multifaceted, multi-talented person. You've got books writing coming up. You do film and stuff. Yeah. Stickering. Anything, yeah. Uh, anything you want to plug before we got to go? Um, not really. Like, I, I'm going, I'm back on the road. Um, I will be at... Where am I going to be next? Railbird Festival, and then Governor's Ball Festival, and then 
Governor's Ball, nice. I'll be at Bonnaroo, and then I'll be at Electric Fire. Oh, Forest. great. So, yeah. Great lineup. And also, for the next two, let's two go months. Knicks, baby, tonight. Let's go Knicks. All Woo! right. Thanks Come for on. joining us, everybody. <laughs> See us at the Governor's Ball. We'll and don't forget to follow yeah. us. Don't forget to subscribe. Do all don't those things. Don't forget to share it with your favorite relatives. You know, one of my, uh, I'll tag her too in this one, uh, the Chad Chad. She has this funny little outro. She's always like, thank you for watching my video out of all the videos on here. I like and that. So That's I wanna cute. Say, yeah, I want to say thank you in Chad Chad style to everybody watching. And we'll see you guys very soon. Bye.